The funding for this video is provided by the amazing members of my Patreon. Also contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. Yeah, I started from PBS Kids. What you gonna do? Fight me? Anyway, wrong video. It is no secret that Hollywood is extremely fat phobic. Going back to the old Hollywood days, oftentimes we would see a plus size person within the works, they are seen to be non-romantic, comic relief, villain, or just the butt of every joke. And to this day, Hollywood is still very fat phobic and it really hasn't gotten much better, I'd say. There's been improvements, but there is a lot of work that needs to be done. But y'all, I'm gonna be real. I have worked on a production that would not hire anyone that was bigger than a size eight. You heard that correctly. A size eight. I have literally saw casting calls that said from sizes zero to eight for women. They legit would not cast nobody bigger than that. Like there's a reason why so many of the leading ladies in these films that we see are thin. There's a reason that celebrities are working out six days a week and having a diet of green juice, salmon, and almonds. Y'all know that Yolanda Hadid diet that shit and they claim that they're happy with their bodies but baby are you really like restricting and working out to exhaustion makes you happy no it doesn't because people who work in the entertainment industry specifically those who are on camera on stage and are more likely to get jobs if they are thin that's just the sad hard on truth i can't stand it because society doesn't see plus size and not even just plus size bodies that have fat on them in places that are the stomach and thighs to not be attractive. That is why we constantly continue to have these horrible tropes. And the only time that society and Hollywood in general likes to see bigger features on people is if it's a big boob and a big butt and then they get upset when they realize these things often come with a little gut, some arm fat and big thighs. It's constantly being shoved in our faces that society does not like fat people. Every channel that we go on, you will see some kind of weight loss or diet commercial or some type of supplement that will suppress your appetite and help you slim down. But also, it's in a lot of the media we watch. We cannot escape the fat phobia that is always pandering us. And Disney has a really big history with this problem too. They're a contributor from back in the day with Pete and the Red Queen. Dating back as early as 1920s with Disney's earliest recurring character, Pete, Disney had relied on tired stereotypes about size and a significant portion of its films. These stereotypes helped reinforce the societal understanding of weight and the concept that thin equals good and fat equals bad. While not all of Disney movies shows and rely on this trope, enough of them do a pattern is apparent to those who look deeper into the ideas Disney promotes and reinforces with the narrative it tells. All existing media have been created based on societal understandings of different groups of people. Fat is often viewed as inherently bad feature and it is a feature that causes assumptions about one's character. Some of the main assumptions about fat people include the idea that they must be lazy and out of control, both of which contribute to the fat villain trope. For one, is lazy, therefore can't achieve or acquire things that they own, as well as out of control, their accomplishments must depend on taking from them, harming others, just as fat people are viewed as harmful and dangerous to the fabric society. Disney's fat villains include, but not limited to, Ursula the Little Mermaid, the Queen of Hearts, Alice in Wonderland, Governor Radcliffe, Pocahontas, Lawrence, the Princess and the Frog, and Pete, the Mickey Mouse universe. Common traits in these characters include loudness, selfishness, greed, and unnecessary cruelty. These are the types of association children are taught to make about fat people by learning these and many others negative tropes through their youth, through the media they consume. Moving on to the Disney Renaissance era with Ursula. 
Ursula's character is particularly important to dissect with a fat studies lens. Ursula is a great example of how fat phobia is especially present for women. Many also claim that Ursula seems to be fashioned after a drag queen from the 1980s, Divine. This brings questions of gender and performativity even more to the forefront of the issues when examining Ursula. Women are expected to perform gender in a very particular way in Disney films, and it requires a whole lot of looks and a whole lot of silence. Ursula is meant to be shockingly ugly and unfeminine in appearance, size, and demeanor. To portray her as fat in some sort form of another, gender non-conforming associates those traits with evil and wrongdoing in the mind of the viewer, consciously or unconsciously. Since many of Disney's viewers are children, they learn from a young age the confines of femininity and means to defy them. To do so is immoral. Of course, one portrayal of a fat, non-traditional feminine character is not necessarily harmful on its own. However, by the time these kids become adults, they will see this trope played out dozens of times over, enough that they can see a fat and gender non-conforming woman appear on screen and know that she will turn out to be the villain. Once this association is accumulated enough, the lines between film and reality are very far separate. For those who don't receive an education that teaches them what these tropes are and how they affect people's thinking, tropes no longer remain harmless. They take on an importance that many would deny or scoff at. They may come to associate all fat and or gender non-conforming folks with the villainous image in the back of their minds, which is exactly the kind of thinking that leads to high rates of abuse and murder of oppressed groups, especially transgender women. And not too long ago, Disney has had one of its worst examples of fat phobia yet, and that is in their Disney Channel original series, Jesse. Quick little shameless plug, everything on my website, harianahook.com, will be 35% off from December 1st to the 24th. That is my Disney December gift to you. Use code HOTSPOT35 for 30% off, valid until Christmas Eve. Thank you guys so much. Now let's continue on with the video. There's a reason that I called this show Ghetto almost a year ago, because that's what it is. That is the main word I can use to describe it ratchet it's not really surprising that disney have put this into their series as numerous other shows on the channel have a fat phobia problem with one of them being on at the same time as jesse was airing and that series was austin and Allie. austin and Allie, we have a plus size character named trish who is played by randy rodriguez and if you comment any fuck shit about randy rodriguez in my comment section you it's getting blocked and deleted we don't do that over here for the most part trish's character as great as the performance that Rainy Rodriguez gave to play her, she is one of the biggest problems with this series and it is an overall look at a problem that keeps happening with this company for decades. So I'm gonna sit here and read you guys' personality description for Trish. Trish is portrayed as loud, lazy, obnoxious, fiercey, and usually selfish when it comes to money. However, she's extremely loyal to her friends and shows deep compassion for them in their times in need. Trish is always there to keep them on the right track and not letting her deficiencies get the better of them. Whether it's Austin's immaturity, Ali's dreaming nature, or Dad's eccentrics and stupidity, despite being feisty, she's shown to have a vulnerable side as seen in Beauties and Bullies when depicts Trish being bullied, getting the lead role of Sleeping Beauty and breaking down in tears. She's shown to dislike labor of any kind and is often seen trying to take the initiative in things she truly cares about, such as fashion, managing tactics, and her friends and family. She's also a bit self-centered and loves the spotlight when it's on her. Though, for the most part, she's perfectly fine on the sidelines. Her temper is shown to be fierce and everyone knows that. And because of this, she unfortunately also falls into the category of the spicy Latina trope. <laughs> but her 
That don't sound too far off from Bertram from Jesse. Let's go take a look at his. Bertram is the Ross family's lazy and grouchy butler who seems to care very little for the kids and calls them nanny killers even though he rarely shows it. He does have a soft side for them. He seems to like Jessie sometimes though he sometimes gives her advice not knowing his intentions and mistakes where she is from. Bertram often takes time for himself and wishes that he could quit his job but quit once then came back. He spends his time cleaning, reading magazines on the couch, and watching TV on the screen. He takes naps and eats bacon-wrapped donuts. The Ross kids insult him sometimes when he tries to help them. When the father is home, he pays attention to his job, but not so much when the mom is at home. Oh, I see the problem. They're both the fat bastard trope. Also called fat bastarditis. Once a television character reaches a certain level of tubbiness, the show they are in will lose sympathy for them. It is generally assuming that overweight people are either pathetic, obnoxious losers, or greedy, hedonistic, corrupt corporate executives. They also tend to be portrayed as ludicrously obsessive eaters. Furthermore, most are portrayed as lazy, having poor hygiene, bad grooming, and no fashion sense. Glandular conditions, genetic tendencies, a natural endomorph body type, low metabolism, and weight gain as a side effect of prescription drugs are treated as lame excuses along with the I'm just big boned mold. This is a trope that Hollywood loves to use when they want to include a plus size person within their work. Bertram is lazy, he's a dickhead, and he unfortunately falls into the category of having no sense of style because this show put him in the same variation of one outfit for almost every episode. I'm not even joking. Didn't even bother to widen their horizons with his looks like oh y'all mean and i also would like to mention that there's an entire episode where bertram's room is dirty and they're just trying to clean it and they got lost in it and shit so, so yeah Ooh. now we will be back after this brief commercial break because we need one hi everyone the captain here i just wanted to get on here real quick and tell you guys thank you so much for your support i have gotten so much fan art from you guys and i've met plenty of y'all in person at the conventions that i have been at and also thank you guys so much for coming to the panels that i host it means so much to me you guys are so great i appreciate every little last bit of support you guys give me Thank you, thank you, thank you. I can say thank you 100 times, but I truly do mean it. Thank you. No surprise, Jesse is a series that has a lot of problems. And it's one of those shows that you look back on are kind of shocked that it came from Disney Channel because it's way more issues beyond fat phobia. There's issues with racism, misogyny, ableism. The list goes on because there's also a bit of anti-Semitism in it just as well. Are we shocked? No. That's gonna be another long ass video for coming from Disney's number later on this month. We're gonna get there. But also it's just beyond that because the kids and just everyone in this show was just so out of pocket. 
the entire time. Jesse literally is just 22 minutes of chaos every episode. Like, I'm not surprised that a show like this was created by Disney, but this is something that I would expect to see more on MTV. But what made it so jarring is that it came from Disney Channel, is that it's a company that presents itself as happy and wholesome, and no. Disney it can be very nasty and they always just try to gloss over that by giving everything a little happy ending like things are peaches and cream and that's not the case. Jesse, in my opinion is a series created by Disney that shows the company's true colors. People often bring up how they look back on Jesse and are shocked at how much fuckery they got away with the show but when you think about it it's just Disney being Disney. They just put it more in our faces. Now let's talk more about the main reason you guys clicked on this video and that is about the character Bertram Winkle. Basically, he is the butler of Jesse. And by the way, if you say anything rude about his actor, you're getting fucking blocked. I'm not doing it. And when it comes to Kevin Chamberlain, who plays Bertram, this was his job and he was basically doing what he was told. Actors really don't have much say into what goes into a show or a movie like people think they do. Like they are just there to follow orders and most of the time okay like they, they can't really do much and it's kind of sad to see the kinds of jobs that plus size actors audition for because that is what Hollywood has to offer for them and if they want to work they just take that or they just go and find something else to do it's painful because Hollywood often doesn't really see plus size actors outside of being fat and the harmful stereotypes that they created that come along with that like Robert Capron you guys may be familiar with him because he played Riley in the Diary of a Wimpy Kid film he spoke about how it bothered him how people could not separate his weight from him as a person and him as a artist specifically. But when the Wimpy Kid franchise began earning him supporting roles that depended upon his weight, Capron's awareness outgrew that his blissful, unaware, fictional alter ego. Not even voice acting and franking winning could free Capron from chubby comic relief. Neither would his long converting chance in the leading part. The role was for an adaptation of Robert Lipton's One Fat Summer, a coming-of-age novel about the self-loathing fat kid who receives motivation to lose weight while working for a stern older man. Invited to L.A. for a screen test, Capron was instructed to remove his shirt, eat a sandwich, and face the camera. Told afterwards by some of the creative team that he was a lock. All that Capron could hear was, You're fat, you're perfect. After the biggest opportunity of his career collapsed in development, he was silently grateful. However, Capron's ultimate humiliation came earlier at the culprit was Riley Jefferson himself. At the 2012 screening of the third Wimpy Kid film, hosted by the NBA player Carmelo Anthony's foundation, the 14-year-old actor filed to the back of the movie theater, hoping to keep a low profile. As the giant screen filled with images of Riley shirtless at a pool, Capron began to notice rows of giggling kids turning to stare at him. At first, the actor was confused. Nothing funny was happening, he said. And then it hit him. Oh, my God. They're laughing because my man boobs are jiggling, Capron recalled thinking. At that moment, the truth of my life began came that being fat is a very bad thing two years later he says he just stopped eating while Bertram is one of the funniest characters on the show because Kevin Chamberlain is a hilarious very talented man so much of the humor that surrounds him is just based on fat Hollywood stereotypes one of the major things that I remember from his character was that if someone asked him to pick up something he would be like it's too far when it could literally be something right over there like even though my water bottle in front of me is out of reach it could be that far and Bertram would say that it's too far and I understand why that could be funny because I get it. We all have had those occasions where the remote is on the other side of the couch and we're just not in the mood to crawl over and get it because we're in a comfortable position so we just leave the TV playing on whatever is playing. I get it. I understand that right there. But they felt the need to keep doing it and dragging it out and it got to the point where one of the kids, that being Zuri, mocked him for it. And this show always found shady little ways for the kids to be mocking Bertram about his weight. And aside from Bertram being extremely lazy, because he was so lazy, there was an episode where he was talking about how he got something to clean the floor for him because he didn't want to get up and fucking do it. And 
as I mentioned earlier, the family within the series was fat phobic to him. Like sometimes in the show Jesse, we would see that Bertram would have love interest. It was only probably about three times I say it wasn't really that often, which is a step up because oftentimes when it comes to fat characters in the media we see, they aren't seen as romantic and they don't really have love interests or they're constantly being rejected and whatnot. So this was a bit progressive I'd say where they had women being into Bertram but it just got ruined because the kids would be so surprised that somebody was interested in Bertram like oh we just had to ruin it like that is just very much rude of you to do that like that one episode where they set Bertram up on a date with the neighbor because they they fucked up someone and they were trying to get something back from her but there's a part where like Bertram kissed her and like Zuri is just standing there looking in disgust and I'm just like I don't know. And also, I'd like to bring up that the kids have beat him up before. Like, they beat him down. Like, when I tell y'all, this show was ghetto. I'm not lying. Well, things did get somewhat better for Bertram's character in the last two seasons, I'd say. It's still wrong because so much of his character is the fat bastard stereotype. His character will forever fall into that category no matter how much they develop him because that is what he started off as in the first season. Bertram's character is a reflection of Hollywood and just society in general because as I mentioned earlier about Riley's actor from Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Hollywood doesn't really see plus size actors and just characters outside of roles like that. Like, you know, the fat best friend, the fat idiot, the fat bastard especially. That is just what they always kind of categorize them and they don't really see them as being like the lead, the person that is extremely romantic or whatever the fuck. They just want fat people to be to the sideline and getting pushed around or they're just straight up dickheads the entire time. Like you look behind the scenes of production and then you look, you know, behind the camera and you see it is drastically different in how the people look. Like the ones on camera are, you know, all dolled up because it makes sense. They're the people that are on camera but behind the scenes, you see more of what you would see when you're just regularly out and about. Not everything looks how it's gonna look, like how it does in a production okay not everyone's gonna be done up all pretty and whatnot because disney just it's not even with jesse disney has like a long history of doing this shit because if you notice when it comes to their disney princesses well they would have the princess looking all cute and tiny and thin and skinny and whatever the fuck they would have them looking like a little doll but then they'll have the women that are keeping them together you know doing their makeup taking care of them and all of that jazz they are of average size they're not super duper dolled up and whatnot and those women aren't seen as romantic at all but you know the ones that have the extremely thin waist the perky boobs the hourglass figure like but are still very thin that is what Disney always pushes to be romantic because I'm not even joking when you look at the Disney princesses almost all of them have the same body type not even joking but oftentimes plus size creatives don't even be bothering to be on camera because they either had to deal with so much rejection or they have to do with these roles where fat people are just portraying being portrayed terribly and then they just have like people being mean to them about their weight and it's just very hurtful i'd see okay because i know like um a lot of people that don't fall into like you know the typical eurocentric beauty standards because i hope you guys know fat phobia is also rooted in racism a lot of them just kind of give up on you know being um an actor or whatnot and being in front of the camera and whatever the fuck because they feel as if their appearance is gonna hinder them from their success and it is sadly is true that is just the sad disgusting nature of this industry and it strongly needs to change because there's even a lot of issues when it comes to plus size modeling because they like one kind of fat model i'd say the fat model that they like is the one that has the big boobs the big butt but she keeps that stomach flat you don't be seeing much rolls there okay like it's just very much annoying how just this entertainment industry treats people in bigger bodies in general and it's just really hurtful to see because like i said i talk to so many people in my life and plenty of them you know the ones that don't fit eurocentric beauty standards because i don't fit eurocentric beauty standards either with you know me being a black woman and the way i choose to wear my hair and even the way i speak because people be like your voice too deep for a woman i'm like bitch shut up like but 
when it comes to those things they be like oh no i just prefer to work behind the scenes i don't feel like i'm pretty enough to be on camera and this and that and the third and it's just hurtful and it's just sad to see that like hollywood is failing us and it's making us feel like people that look different especially people that are plus size they don't deserve to have stories about them being told because i kid you not in real life i'm telling y'all fat people be getting dirt when it comes to entertainment okay when you look at like what the media shows for fat people and then you actually know about fat people in real life it's completely different there are a lot of fat people out here that have like you know dating lives and there are a lot of people that want them and whatnot there's a lot of fat people that get married and have kids and they're literally the main characters of their own lives but hollywood and just the film industry they won't reflect that or they won't reflect it often or they won't reflect it well and when it comes to times like this y'all know i say the only solution when it comes down to this is to you know support independent creators support people that are making stories about plus size people and whatnot make your own stories if you like to just as well if you want better representation for characters that are not thin that's really kind of like the only solution that I have to this because I'm like we can scream up and down about Hollywood being fat phobic but because so much of our society is conditioned to think that you cannot be beautiful if you were bigger than a size eight it's just very much hurtful and it's annoying when you look at like you know when you go shopping and whatnot a lot of the clothes is clothes don't go past xl and it's annoying when i have my own shop because a lot of these vendors i see do not be going past the xl and some of them don't even go past a large and a large is not even big if we're being fucking for real like it's just a lot that really needs to be done when it comes to fat acceptance i'd say because i i get so mad y'all when i am looking trying to find vendors for certain things and this and the third and i cannot like find somebody that sells past a large or extra large because i fought y'all to get that 2xl for the marinette shirt on my store i fought my ass off to find that and get that because i was just like no like please at least give me one extra bigger size please i need it please like y'all be nice we all can work these clothes who cares what the fuck your body look like you gonna look good in that shirt just as well the subject of fat phobia is something that's just very it's just very draining i'd say as somebody who is a recovering anorexic because I, I dealt with anorexia when I was from the ages of about like 9 to 12 years old. It was bad. It was a mess. It was sports anorexia specifically. When it comes to the subject of like body image and whatnot, it's just very scary. And we realize that what they see as conventionally beautiful is just unrealistic and it's sad. Hi everyone, thank you for watching today's episode of Disney Simber. At the end of every episode of Disney Simber, I will be answering three of you guys' cosplay questions that you have asked me. So I will pull up the list right now and we will begin. Uh, first question, um, is there a favorite cosplay that you'll ever redo? Hmm. Let's see, um, favorite cosplay that I'd ever redo? Ooh, the thing about it is that like, I don't really know if there's a cosplay I like to redo. There's like cosplays for certain characters that I would like to do again, because y'all know I did my Julica from Miraculous Cosplay. I promise y'all, I, I just don't do Miraculous Cosplays. I do a lot of other ones. It's just I've done so many from that show. I want to do her other um, outfit that she wore in the series because she has two other outfits. She did uh, Reflecta, which was her villain form, and then she had Purple Tigress, which is her hero form. Usually, I would like to do different outfits that the character has worn. I love Faye, uh, Faye Valentine from uh, Miraculous, not Miraculous Lady, Cowboy Bebop. And I love her mini outfits panty from panty and stocking i love almost every single outfit that she wore in that show and i still want to you know do those over and over again i think i've done about three panty cosplays so far and i'm not stopping there i'm gonna be doing numerous more all right okay mainly cosplays that i did when i was like a kid i would like to redo them because i did like a darwin waterson cosplay before and i would like to do that one again but make it a little bit more 
stylish I'd say usually the only cosplays I'm thinking that I would like to redo are ones that I just did from my childhood like you know doing Halloween costumes and shit that's really that or if I've done a character already I want to do other outfits that they have worn within their movies and shows and all of that jazz okay uh hope that answered that question I hope it did um is there any insight or recommendations you could make for people who want to get into cosplay? Um, I say I give more insight because I don't really watch like cosplay videos like that on YouTube no more like I used to. I used to always be watching cosplay videos like uh, character transformations and all that. Y'all know Promise Fawn. I used to stay watching Promise Fawn's videos where she would like, you know, do the Disney transformations and everything like that. When it comes to cosplay, remember that this is a hobby. This is for fun, okay? A lot of people do want to turn cosplay into a job and a career and this and that and the third. But if you're just going into cosplay only with that intention, you most likely not gonna enjoy it. That's just the truth. That literally is just the fucking truth. You're not gonna, if you're trying to do something strictly for money and not because you like it, it's gonna be miserable for you. Like. This is how I decide to keep my cosplays fun. I um, First of all, I've always loved dressing up. Like, I'm literally a theater kid. I do acting, all that jazz. I literally always dressing up, okay? I love to dress up. I love costumes and whatnot, but I told myself I am only going to cosplays from things that I like. I'm not about to sit here and cosplay from something popular because I see that everybody is doing it. Like, I'll take Chainsaw Man, for example. I ain't never seen Chainsaw Man. I don't know if I really care enough to watch it or read the book or whatnot. And I see, like, people have been, you know, doing Chainsaw Man cosplays, and that's been getting them a lot of attention on social media. I see that. Everybody looks cute. Everyone looks great. But then... I know that wouldn't be truthful for me to go and do that because people have asked me to cosplay for certain characters before from things that I either don't like or things I've never seen or things that I just don't care to do because I'm pretty sure the thing the most popular thing that I have done a cosplay for would have to be My Hero Academia but that's because I've act I haven't finished it I'm I, I gotta catch up it kind of fell off a little bit though for me but I was well into the series well into the manga to know what what I needed and who the characters were and all of that jazz um yeah like I said I can't really I can't really cosplay as things that I've never seen that's some insight that I do give people I can't really tell people what to do or whatnot but I how low-key unless your friend has asked you to dress up and do a cosplay collab with them for pictures and whatnot that's a different thing but a lot of people they be like oh this is super popular and I'm gonna do this because I know it's gonna give me attention like I'm not that kind of person so that's like some of the insight that I could give you right there when it comes to that subject I hope I did help a little bit okay um uh, moving on to the next one the last one how do you budget cosplays I reuse I reuse stuff I reuse shit all the time okay like literally I reuse so much learn how to learn how to work Photoshop that was the main thing I tell people when uh, it comes to cosplay learn how to work Photoshop because it literally cuts back on you having to go to places and whatnot or you can alter things fix colors and whatnot because when I did my but I'm a cheerleader cosplay literally if Photoshop Photoshop is what pulled off that cosplay. Photoshop is what pulled off my main girl's cosplay. Not my bunny suit Regina George cosplay. Um, the one I did that was like the movie poster. Photoshop literally will help you. That's another way to budget cosplay. A lot of ways, I like I said, I reuse a lot of um, things. I reuse a lot of the things that I have in my house and whatnot. I already have like a good abundance of clothes because a lot of my clothes are thrifted and whatnot. Because people be asking me, how do you be doing all this and that and the third? Y'all, a lot of my stuff is thrifted, okay? I reuse lots of pieces. Um, getting familiar with hair. Like, getting wigs really does help. Uh, like, different colored wigs. And colored wigs are fairly affordable. They usually run for about like 20 to $30, I'd say. Um, learning how to, you know, use body paint, learn how to do makeup, um, thrifting, and reusing a lot of pieces, okay? Because there is this one, that white jacket, I have reused this shit so many times for cosplay. I be reusing fishnet leggings and things of the sort. I be reusing sunglasses. Y'all have seen me do that before. I've reused wigs all the time. Like, 
learn to reuse your things. It's not bad to use things a second time when doing different costumes. You don't always need new fresh pieces when it comes to you making new costumes, okay? You don't, you absolutely do not. All right, okay. Um, and then also, um, my camera is, I've had this camera for a while. I literally saved up to get it. Um, so I usually can just take a lot of my pictures myself on my camera. I know for Momocon I am going to be hiring a photographer, but that's just kind of me budgeting and saving up because I know that's going to be a thing. Usually it's just kind of like, when it comes to budgeting, like I said, make sure you set enough money aside for this and that and the third, but you also got to make sure your shit is together. Make sure you learn how to work Photoshop, you know, take pictures, like learn how to take pictures on your own, reuse costume pieces yeah that's pretty much all i gotta say thank you guys so much for watching today's episode of disney simber and i will see y'all tomorrow for the next episode Will just blow your mind Buttercup like villains three at a time Bubbles will smile while kicking your butt And blossom will eat them out of their blood Cherishing power puff, two of a kind Both wanna save the world before bad times From Townsville, Memphis, New York to LA The Powerpuff Girls are just here to stay